open your eyes This is it, this is now This is what I've been talking about Looking out This is it
who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I do. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to be present and be glorified in this ceremony. Let the bride and groom bless them, give them good health and long life. Let their love grow stronger day by day. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Friends and family members, we have the pleasure of seeing these two young people present themselves before God and these witnesses for, for the purpose of being united in holy bonds of matrimony. Therefore, if any person can just show just cause why these two may not lawfully be joined together as husband and wife, let him speak now or forever hold their peace. We duck that one. <laughs> Amen. Marriage is a divine, designed, and enduring institution, instituted by Almighty God, and given to man in a state of innocence and happiness. Hear the divine record of the first marriage in human history. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So Adam gave names to all the cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And God took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman. And he brought her to the man, and Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother, and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. That was from Genesis 2.18. <clears throat> Now, Zach and Courtney, in your marriage, let all bitterness, wrath, and anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving, one another, even as Christ forgave you. And that's from Ephesians 4. The Bible talks so much about love, but my favorite verse about love is 1 Corinthians 13. <clears throat> Love suffers long and is kind. In other words, love is patient and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Let all that you do be done with love. Can you do that? A little story about Zach and Courtney. Luckily, Zach was a pers persistent with Courtney. Lucky he's a persistent man. As the story goes, he was sitting in his tree stand and on his phone and decided to text uh, this new girl, Courtney, in his life. And Kind of hinted, hey, we should do something. And apparently she said no. <laughs> but Zach was persistent, probably in the tree stand the next weekend, or the next, and decided, uh, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try again. And he sent a little message to Courtney, and again, she said no. Strike two. Zach is a good guy. He's a good guy. He was persistent. He saw something in Courtney that he didn't want to just let go. So he texted, texted Courtney a third time, and finally she said yes. And now we are here due to persistence. Now that you are becoming husband and wife, it's important to be persistent. Continue being persistent in pursuing each other with love.
If you are now ready to accept each other as husband and wife, to pursue, to pursue life's journey together, you will acknowledge this decision of hearts by taking each other by the right hand. So please face each other and take each other's right hand. Zach, you're gonna go first. You're gonna repeat after me. And you're gonna finish it with I do, I hope. <laughs> do you, Zachary Thomas Price, take Courtney Lynn Scheffler, whom you hold by the hand, to be your true and lawful wife, to love and cherish her, in joy or pain, in sickness or health, and forsaking all others, to cleave to her only, so long as you both shall live? Courtney, it's your turn. Do you, Courtney Lynn Shepler, take Zachary Thomas Price, whom you hold by the hand, to be your lawful and true husband, to love, honor, and cherish him, in joy or pain, in sickness or health, and forsaking all others, to cleave to him only, as long as you both shall live? I do. What pledge have you for the faithful fulfillment of your marriage vows? Matt, the rings? Usually the husband gets chipped out, but <laughs> she did good. This is a nice one. One of her room just glistens. Wow, it's beautiful. This circle of precious metal is justly regarded as a fitting symbol of the purity and the bond of marriage. The ancients were reminded by the circle of eternity, as it is so fashioned as to have neither a beginning or an end, while gold is so incorruptible that it cannot be tarnished by use or time, so may this union be incorruptible in its purity and more lasting than time itself. Zach, I'm going to start with you. Take this ring. Zach, you're going to repeat after me. With this ring I be wed. With this ring I be wed. As a token of my love. As a token of my love. And with all my earthly possessions. I share with you. I share with you. And pledge my love. And pledge my love. Now and forever. Now and forever. You may place the ring on for this finger. Alright, Courtney, it's your turn. Repeat after me. With this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. As a token of my love. As a token of my love. And with all my earthly possessions. And with all my earthly possessions. I share with you. And pledge my love, and pledge my love. Now, and forever. now and forever. I place that on this. At this time, Zach and Courtney have chosen the ceremony of candles to signify their union.
Let us pray. Please bow bow your head. Our Father in heaven, bless this man and woman that having promised to live together as husband and wife, you will strengthen and enable them to keep these vows. We pray for your blessing on them and on their home from this day forward. May your presence be evident in their home and in every area of their relationship together. May the rings they have placed on each other's fingers serve as a continual reminder of the vows they made this day. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Inasmuch as Zachary and Courtney have exchanged vows and rings before God and the gathered witnesses, by virtue of the authority entrusted to me as a minister of the Christ Church and in agreement with the laws of Wisconsin, I now pronounce you husband and wife. What God has joined together, let no man separate. You may kiss the bride. Monica and 
Hello, everybody. <laughs> For those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Alex Pray. Al, Alan, Salas, Al Salas. Yeah, so those, I am those names. <laughs> uh, don't ask me why, but all of them are where, all of them are pretty much started by Zach. There will ever be my names. Yes, he's weird. Anyways, I've known Zach for I don't know how long. I, I think about seven years right now. Within those seven years, I've become incredibly close with Zach and his brothers Matt and Joey. And let me tell you, we've had an incredible friendship with awesome memories. And but being here today really takes the cake. I'm incredibly honored here to be here with all of you today celebrating Courtney and Zach's special day. Zach and I met back in 2013 through a mutual friend. We used to cruise around all the time and find ways to get in trouble. Dwayne. That's right. I'm not going to tell you the stories like Schaefer does, so, okay. <laughs> I had a big old rusty, terrible boat of a truck Ford. Remember that thing? That thing was it was terrible. <laughs> that I named Betty, and I would always call Zach because he wanted to go mudding or do something that, to be honest, I wasn't really comfortable doing. But I did it anyways because I could tell his friendship would be lifelong. He always wanted to bust out his beautiful 84 square body Chevy that he still had. 85, sorry. <laughs> Joey. Whatever. <laughs> that he still has to this day. I think he put it in approximate, like, I don't know, 10 miles since he's owned it, right? Something like that, right? 11,000. <laughs> Which brings me to my next point. As we all know, Zach is a firefighter for the city of West Dallas, and he has truly achieved what I like to call the American dream. There was a period when I never saw Zach just because he was always at school, work, anything that was to prepare for his, his and Courtney's future. But I respect him for that, and he is one of the most successful and hardworking people I know. He's got the house, a beautiful wife, a great job, and most importantly, a healthy life. I still think he is a complete ding dong, but you know, what are friends for? <laughs> Courtney, you look so beautiful tonight. Don't mess this up, dude. I'm being serious, don't. <laughs> Court, you're such a blessing for Zach, and I can see the love that resonates through you guys when you're together, and I wouldn't want him to be with anyone else but you. You guys are the definition of love and really should be an example of what perfect relationship looks like. I wish you both nothing less than a happy, healthy, memorable, and successful marriage. I love you both. I'm not gonna make Courtney stand up because she said she can't wear her dress, but. Uh, Courtney, I wanna say thank you for everybody that, come, that came today. I uh, hope everybody had a great time. Hopefully the food was good. And uh, let's start partying.
ladies and gentlemen, the father-daughter dance. True 